Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, Tony. So long. I'm looking for the Scott Bayo estate. He's so dreamy. I loved him in, well, nothing actually. As far as immigrant communities, uh, this one is rather unique. having some concerns about this meal. In my experience, when you sit down with Iranians, you're generally served about eight times as much food as any human being could ever eat. It's delicious food, but there's a lot of it. My name is Salgan Rifani Saleh. My biggest inspiration was my father. I grew up watching him cook for family and friends. It was deeply inspiring to see how happy he could make people with the food. I wanted to do the same things, but I knew I had to leave Iran to find out the opportunity as a woman. In 2000, I came to US, and in 2013, I finally opened the Taste of Tehran. Why LA? There's a lot of the environment that reminds me of Iran. Most people who immigrated here, came, as I understand it, came immediately following the, uh, the 79 revolution. Yes. And it's been talked about as one of the larger groups, but also one of the more fragmented, because you have significant numbers of Armenian Iranians, mm -hmm. Iranian Jews, Iranian Muslims. The Baha'is. The Baha'is. <laughs> is there a meeting ground for all of the parties or all You're of the here. I'm here, this, this is, is it. Here. This is Westwood Boulevard, I mean, Taste of Tehran, these restaurants that are here, I think is a great unifier. Mm -hmm. I think in the early 80s when people came and we were able to establish stores and things along this strip, but also the news source, you know, who could, who could reach into Iran, who heard news, how would you share it right. to be on this street? And you can go up and down this whole block and not speak English once. It seems to be Iranian women are the most confrontational. Women look you right in the eye. Mm -hmm. The hijab goes back, mm -hmm. it seems, every day. That's true. There seems to be a constant pressing and probing for, can we move things just a little bit forward? Mm -hmm. This is something that really made an impression. And people are not shy about their opinions. Yeah. That spirit of resistance, I think, has stayed alive because we know what we deserve and what we should have access to. And I think that permeates across the culture, regardless of faith, that kind of boldness yeah. and self-determination. How has the travel restriction changed things? It's devastating. Um, I think what's happened in the United States is that they've created second-class citizenry because we're not afforded the same rights um, to have people come to visit us as others do. And I think that that's one part of this travel ban that people don't talk about enough. My father passed away last year, and in the last hours and moments of his life, literally nobody was able to board a plane and come. Not from Germany, not from Iran, not from London, from nowhere. For, for what? What happens if this travel van stays? 20 years from now, what will this neighborhood look like? I wish I, I could answer. As we're speaking right now, the attorneys in the Supreme Court are deliberating between what this, what's gonna happen with this travel van. One of the odd, completely subjective impressions that I got while I was in Tehran, I had this persistent fantasy that I could roll a van up in the middle of Central Square, pull two giant studio monitors out of the back quickly before the Basij arrived, and turn on the Beastie Boys loud, and then everybody, like, in Footloose would start dancing. I, I mean, I, I got this I sense. I promise, I promise that if that you will could, happen. I think that that's true inside and outside of Iran, is that we love a good party. There's always a reason to dance and laugh. The jokes that come out and the laughing at yourself the way that Iranians do, it's just hilarious. 
you can always get us with nose job jokes. Well, this we was something it. I was going to bring it up, but I thank you for bringing it, it up. This is mine, so I'm totally okay talking about it. I was in a bathroom here when I first moved here, mm -hmm. and it was amazing because I looked at these women. I thought, are you guys sisters? And I, like, they looked very similar, and they all looked at me, and they're like, no, no, we just have the same doctor. They all bought the same one. Like, they literally all went to the same shirt. shop. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have the, uh, with the pal drop. Yeah. I'll take the Angelina Jolie. <laughs>